Hello my dear students welcome to my youtube channel that's concepts of chemistry before starting today's lecture please do subscribe my channel my dear students today's topic for the lecture is the sp2 hybridization but we are doing an example in which we are having three pi bonds in the main structure also so let's talk about today's example and that's sulfur trioxide so today's example is a sulfur trioxide that's SO3 molecule. Now let's make the Lewis structure first to understand the hybridization of SO3. So I'm writing sulfur over here, the first oxygen over here, second oxygen over here, and the third oxygen over here. Now let's talk about the sulfur. What's the atomic number of sulfur? It's 16. So the configuration is 2, 8, 6. That means sulfur is having six electrons in its valence shell. So let's mark the six electrons around the sulfur. That's first electron, second electron, third electron, fourth electron, fifth electron, and the sixth electron. Now let's talk about the oxygen atom. The atomic number for oxygen is eight. So the configuration is two comma six. That means here also we are having six electrons in the valence shell of the oxygen. Let's mark the six six electrons in all the three oxygen atoms. Uh, I'm doing for the first oxygen first, the first electron, second electron, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Now let's come to the second oxygen, first electron, second electron, third electron, fourth electron, fifth electron, sixth electron. Now third oxygen. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and a sixth electron. Now, let's make the bonds. All the three oxygen atoms are going to form two two bonds with the sulfur to attain the octet in its valence shell. So that's the first bond, the second bond of the first oxygen atom with the sulfur. Now let's come to the second oxygen, that's the first bond and that's the second bond. Now let's uh, come to the third oxygen, that's the first bond and here it comes out to be second bond. Now let's count the number of valence electron of oxygen after the formation of two two bonds with the sulphur. So now let's count it, the first electron, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and the eighth. So the first oxygen has attained the eight electrons in its valence shell. That means it has attained the octet. Now let's come to the second oxygen. Uh, I'm counting the number of valence electron for the second oxygen. The first electron, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and the eighth. So the second oxygen also attained the octet, that means eight electrons in its valence shell after the formation of two bonds with the sulfur. Now, let's come to the third oxygen. I'm counting the number of valence electron for the third oxygen after the formation of two bonds with sulfur. That's the first electron, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and the eighth. So the third oxygen has also attained the eight electrons in its valence shell after the formation of two bonds with the sulfur. Now let's count the number of valence electron for sulfur after the formation of two two bonds with three oxygen atoms. So that's the first electron, second electron, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, 11th and the 12th. So the sulfur is acquiring 12 electrons after the formation of two two bonds with the three oxygen and that's the expansion of octet in case of sulfur atom. Why so? Why sulfur is expanding the octet? First of all it got the 12 electrons and why sulfur is expanding the octet? Because Sulfur is having 3D vacant orbitals 
for the expansion of the octet oxygen is not having two d vacant orbital so oxygen cannot expand its octet but sulfur can because sulfur is having 3d vacant orbitals <coughs> now let's come to the types of bond i have already told you whenever there is a formation of double bond between two atoms then out of that two bonds one bond will always be sigma and the another will be the pi so i have marked the sigma and pi bond between the first oxygen and the sulfur now let's mark the sigma and pi bond for the second oxygen and this sulfur it's again double bond so one bond is sigma and the another one is pi let's come to the third oxygen that's out of again double bond the one bond is sigma and the another is a pi that means here in this case here we are having in total six covalent bonds in the structure we are having six covalent bonds in the structure out of which three bonds are sigma bonds and the another three are pi bonds now now in case of so3 in this so3 maximum number of bonds are formed by sulfur that's six so in this case in so3 the central atom will be obviously sulfur so we are going to talk about the hybridization of the sulfur atom now let's talk about the sulfur what's the atomic number it's 16 what's the electronic configuration of sulfur the valence electronic configuration of sulfur will be 3s2 3p4 so here the valence shell is the third shell in third shell we are having a subshell p subshell but also the vacant d subshell in this case so sulfur is having 3d subshell for the expansion of octet that is to have 12 electrons in this case sulfur is having 12 electrons after the formation of six covalent bonds so that why so because sulfur is having 3d vacant orbitals now let's understand the concept of hybridization in case of so3 let's make the orbital diagram of the sulfur in the form of boxes that's the 3s in 3p we are having three degenerate orbitals that is orbitals with equal energies so here we are having three orbitals in case of 3p and 3d subshell is having five degenerate orbitals so i am making five boxes for the 3d so that's the 3d subshell Now let's fill the electron according to the electronic configuration. The 3s is having two electrons. So the first electron over here with a spin of plus one by two and second electron over here with a spin of minus one by two. Now 3p is having four electrons in its valence shell. So we have to fill that four electrons according to the Hund's rule. That is firstly all the degenerate orbitals of 3p will get one electron each. After that the pairing will start. So the first electron over here, the second over here, third over here. The Hund's rule is followed now. Now the fourth electron will be over here. So pairing will start from the fourth electron. Now this is the ground state of the sulfur the ground state electronic configuration of the sulfur now let's come back to the lewis structure here sulfur is forming total of six covalent bonds so for the formation of six covalent bonds we need one one electrons in six different atomic orbitals in case of sulfur for the formation of six covalent bonds why so because i have already told you whenever there is a formation of covalent bonds the two combining atoms in case of that two combining atoms the two atomic orbitals of that combining atoms with overlap with each other containing 
one electron each. So that the only then there will be the formation of covalent bond. Here the total of six covalent bonds are forming, which signifies that in case of sulfur, there must be six atomic orbitals containing one one electron, so that they can overlap with the atomic orbitals of oxygen for the formation of six covalent bonds. So here what's going to happen? Firstly, uh, the electrons which are in pair will get excited. So the first electron that will excite will be of 3p orbital. So this electron which is in pair will excite from 3p to acquire one of the 3d orbital. And the another electron will be from 3s. Another electron from 3s will excite from 3s and will acquire one of the orbital in 3d. By this way, sulfur will have 6 unpaired electrons or 6 electrons in different 6 orbitals. So, let me make the excited state. That's 3s. These are the degenerate orbitals of 3p. And these are the 5 degenerate orbitals of 3d. Now, one electron over here, here, here and here and two electrons that have been excited to the 3d. So, we got the total of 6 electrons in different 6 orbitals and that's called the excited state. Now, from here, the intermixing of atomic orbitals will take place, that is hybridization will take place from here. But how many atomic orbitals will be involved in hybridization? That will be decided by uh, number of sigma bonds that are found in sulfur trioxide molecules. So there are total of three sigma bonds that are present in the sulfur trioxide molecule. And I have already told you one important thing that hybrid orbitals hybrid orbitals only forms sigma bonds but not the pi bonds so how many sigma bonds are there in the so3 molecule these are total of three sigma bonds. So that means here in hybridization process, three atomic orbitals will be involved and that three atomic orbitals will be one of the 3s and two of the 3p. I want to tell you one very, very generic rule in case of hybridization. 3s subshell or we can say any like s subshell the s subshell of any shell which are taking the shell that is taking part in hybridization the s subshell is always always involved there is not any hybridization in which the s subshell is not present s subshell will always be there the s orbitals we can say will always be there in the hybridization process so that means 1s, the 1 orbital of s and 2p orbitals will intermix. They will intermix. This intermixing is called hybridization. Why we have taken only 3 orbitals? Because in case of SO3, only three sigma bonds were forming. That's why we have taken only three orbitals, the 1s and the 2p. So, the three orbitals are mixing, 1s and 2p. So, we will get three new hybrid orbitals. We will get three new hybrid orbitals and they will be degenerate. That is, all the three hybrid orbitals will have equal energies. So, we got the three new 
हाइब्रिड ऑर्बिटल्स सो वॉट विल बी द नेम्स ऑफ दीज थ्री हाइब्रिड ऑर्बिटल्स डूर द इंटरमिक्सिंग द वन एस एंड टू पीस आर इन्वॉल्व सो दैट फेट विल बी कॉल्ड एज एस पी टू इन केस ऑफ एस पी टू ऑर्बिटल वी आर हैविंग थर्टी थ्री पॉइंट थ्री थ्री परसेंट एस करेक्टर एंड सिक्सटी सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स परसेंट पी करेक्टर पर हाइब्रिड ऑर्बिटल सो वी गॉट दी थ्री हाइब्रिड ऑर्बिटल्स एंड ऑल विल बी नेम्ड एज एस पी टू हाइब्रिड ऑर्बिटल्स सो वी गॉट द थ्री एस पी टू हाइब्रिड ऑर्बिटल्स सो वेन वी हैव इंटरमिक्स द वन एस एंड टू पी हाउ मेनी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स फॉर देयर द वन इलेक्ट्रॉन वॉज इन थ्री एस एंड द टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स फॉर इन द थ्री पी इन द ऑर्बिटल्स विच आर गेटिंग इंटरमिक्सिंग सो वी हैव टू अगेन रीडिस्ट्रीब्यूट दैट थ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन्स सो द फर्स्ट इलेक्ट्रॉन ओवर हेयर अकॉर्डिंग टू हूं रूल सेकेंड ओवर हेयर एंड द थर्ड ओवर हेयर नाउ विच ऑर्बिटल्स आर लेफ्ट हेयर वी हैव लेफ्ट विद वन ऑफ द थ्री पी ऑर्बिटल विच इज अनहाइब्रिडाइज सो आई एम मार्किंग वन ऑफ द थ्री पी ऑर्बिटल विच इज अनहाइब्रिडाइज एंड वी हैव लेफ्ट विद द थ्री डी ऑर्बिटल्स द थ्री डी सबशल कंटेनिंग फाइव ऑर्बिटल्स दैट आर लेफ्ट अनहाइब्रिडाइज सो आई एम मेकिंग दैट ऑल्सो बिकॉज दे वर हैविंग टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स सो वी कॉल द थ्री डी सो नाउ द वन इलेक्ट्रॉन was in 3p orbital which was unhybridized and two electrons were in 3d which were unhybridized now now here let's talk about the oxygen i'm talking about the oxygen now was the uh, atomic number of oxygen it's 8 was the valence electronic configuration that's 2s2 2p 4 now let's make the orbital diagram in the form of box for the 2p so in 2p we are always having three orbitals and here we have to fill four electrons so first second third and the fourth so that means we are having two p orbitals which are having one one electron each out of this one will form one orbital of 2p will form the sigma bond and the another 2p orbital will form the pi bond so let's make it over here first of all i'm talking about the first oxygen in case of first oxygen we are having this 2p orbitals these are the 2p orbitals of oxygen number one so this two we are having four electrons one two three and the four now here here what's going to happen one of the two p orbital of oxygen number one will have head on overlap with the sp2 hybrid orbital of the sulfur to form the sigma bond right so that's the sigma bond that has been formed by head on overlap of sp2 hybrid orbital of sulfur with the p orbital of the oxygen number 1 now now let's talk about the second oxygen oh sorry let's talk about the another orbital of the oxygen number 1 which is having one electron and that's going to form the pi bond by the lateral or sideways overlap with the 3p orbital of the sulfur so the 2p orbital of oxygen number 1 is going to have sideways or lateral overlap with the 3p orbital of sulfur to form the pi bond so this pi bond have been formed by sideways overlap of 3p orbital of sulfur with the 2p orbital of the oxygen number 
सो दिस पाई बॉन्ड इज ऑल्सो रिगार्डेड एज पी पाई पी पाई बिकॉज दिस पाई बॉन्ड हैज बिन फॉर्म बिटवीन टू पी ऑर्बिटल्स बाय दिस साइड वाइज ओवरलैप सो दैट्स ऑल अबाउट द फर्स्ट ऑक्सीजन द ऑक्सीजन नंबर वन नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द सेकेंड ऑक्सीजन अगेन सेकेंड ऑक्सीजन इज हैविंग टू पी ऑर्बिटल्स दीज आर द टू पी ऑर्बिटल्स इन टू पी ऑर्बिटल्स वी आर हैविंग फोर इलेक्ट्रॉन द फर्स्ट द सेकेंड द थर्ड एंड द फोर्थ दीज आर द टू पी ऑफ ऑक्सीजन नंबर टू नाउ here again one of the 2p orbital will have had on overlap with the sp2 hybrid orbital of sulfur to form the sigma bond so this is the sigma bond that have been formed by had on overlap of sp orbital of sulfur sorry sp2 hybrid orbital of sulfur with the p orbital of oxygen number now another orbital of oxygen number 2 which is having one electron will have sidewise or lateral overlap with one of the 3d orbital of sulfur so that's the pi bond that's the pi bond that has been formed by sidewise or lateral overlap of 3d of sulfur with the 2p orbital of oxygen number 2 so this time this pi bond will be regarded as p pi d pi bond because this pi bond has been formed by sidewise or lateral overlap of p orbital of oxygen with the d orbital of the sulfur that's why it's called the p pi d pi bond now let's talk about the third oxygen again i am drawing the 2p orbitals of the third oxygen these are the 2p orbitals of oxygen number third now again 2p is having four electrons 1 2 3 and the four in this case also the 2p orbital of oxygen number 3 one of the 2p orbital which is having one electron so orbital of oxygen number 3 the p orbital of oxygen number 3 having one electron will have had on overlap with sp2 hybrid orbital of the sulfur to form the sigma bond i'm repeating it again that 2p orbital of oxygen number 3 containing one electron will have had on overlap with sp2 hybrid orbital of the sulfur for the formation of sigma bond so that's the sigma sp2 and a p why sp2 p because sp2 hybrid orbital of sulfur have had on overlap with the p orbital of oxygen number 3 for the formation of sigma bond now another orbital of oxygen number 3 having one electron will have side or the lateral overlap with another 3d orbital of sulfur for the formation of pi bond so here pi bond has been formed between 3d orbital of the sulfur with the 2p orbital of oxygen number 3 by side wise overlapping so this pi bond is also called p pi d pi bond because it has been formed by side wise or lateral overlap of p orbital of oxygen number 3 with the d orbital of the sulfur so that's all about the hybridization of the sulfur trioxide now we got the sp2 hybridization of sulfur in sulfur trioxide so sp2 hybridization has trigonal planar structure so that's the sulfur oxygen oxygen and the oxygen so here first of all this is the 
sigma bond the sigma bond that has been found by head on overlap of sp2 hybrid orbital of sulfur with the 2p orbital of oxygen now i am again making the sigma bond this is again the sigma bond that has been found by head on overlap of sp2 hybrid orbital of sulfur with the p orbital of oxygen and that's also the sigma bond that has been found by head on overlap of sp2 hybrid orbital of sulfur with the p orbital of the oxygen now let's talk about the pi bond now the very first oxygen will have pi bond and that will be p pi p pi bond why so because this pi bond has been formed by sidewise overlap of 3p orbital of sulfur with the 2p orbital of the oxygen number 1 so it's a pi bond between p orbital and the p orbital that's why it is called as p pi p pi bond now let's talk about the second oxygen that's also the pi bond and this pi bond will be regarded as p pi d pi bond why so because this pi bond has been formed by the lateral or sidewise overlap of 2p orbital of oxygen with the 3d orbital of the sulfur now again we are having the pi bond with the third oxygen this pi bond is also p pi d pi bond because this pi bond has been formed by sidewise or lateral overlap of again the 2p orbital of oxygen and the 3d orbital of the sulfur by sidewise overlapping so that's all about here in this case the bond angle will remain 120 degrees so that's all about the hybridization of sulfur in case of sulfur trioxide molecule and one last point which i would like to again refer over here about the energies i always tell you about the energies at the last of each and every hybridization topic is that first of all here we are having two endothermic processes the first is excitation of electrons so that will be called as promotional energy so i am writing here is the consumption here is the consumption or absorption of which energy that's promotional energy that is to promote electrons from lower orbital to higher orbital so here the consumption of promotional energy and during the intermixing of atomic orbitals as 1s and 2 pi there is a consumption of energy called hybridization energy here is the consumption of hybridization energy now when there is a formation of three sigma bonds and the three pi bonds the energy is released so i am writing here energy is released during the formation during the formation of three sigma and three pi bonds and the this the energy which is released this compensates this energy that's which compensates or recovers promotional energy and hybridization energy that's why formation of sulfur trioxide is possible or practically feasible so when the uh, here the energy is released during the formation of 3 sigma and 3 pi bonds which compensates the promotional energy as well as the hybridization energy that's why the formation of sulfur trioxide is feasible or practically possible so two of the endothermic processes promotional energy and hybridization energy comp gets compensated during the formation of new 
sigma bonds and the new pi bonds between the two atoms that's why the formation of any molecule here in this case sulfur trioxide is practically feasible so that's all about the hybridization that's sp2 with the three pi bonds in the structure i hope you all understood today's lecture if any student wants to book a paid one to one online class to clear their doubts then he she can contact me my phone number is mentioned on thumbnail of this lecture please do like subscribe and share this channel to maximum number of students don't forget to press the subscribe button stay blessed